hello beautiful people welcome back to the channel if you guys see something fuzzy up here in this vicinity i have my windproof microphone on y'all let me know how the audio quality on that is now today is sunday and i want to go ahead and bring this up um before i go ahead and get started starting monday for the next two weeks we're going to be working between six to seven days so hopefully i get a sunday off to finish this video type deal i did start kind of late in the day type deal because i was actually i actually came here like two hours ago and got started on doing what i was doing and let me show you guys what i was doing now i told you guys that i was going to rip out the valve system on this cylinder head now i already did majority of it and i left two just to show you guys how it was done and i got everything you know perfectly in order all right so like i said this is the exhaust this is the intake all right everything is in order I got the keepers in all that good stuff now this is the tool i am using to get the valves and stuff out alongside with the keepers and stuff now you're gonna need that tool and you are going to need a magnet because you don't want to lose them keepers what did i do with it all right there it is here's my tool right here and yes like i said i was working on this thing and everything is all oiled up and dirty so it is expected all right guys so here's my setup I'm gonna do one of them so I'll show you guys how it's done. Now keep in mind, these are adjustable so you're gonna have to adjust these. They do have two sizes. I'm using the bigger size, so come on. I'm using the bigger size. And now once you have everything adjusted, you wanna go ahead and go underneath, it's like those. I'm using my, no, I'm using my left hand to feel for the valve to make sure it's seated. And once that happens, I can just push, maybe a little bit resistant. Ah, there we go keepers are out and so is the valve and the hats now obviously you are going to hear a pop because the keepers haven't been out in a minute it is that that's what i think but i did feel for grooves make sure i didn't you know split anything or you know cleave anything or whatever but well let me make sure yeah we're good and like i said before make sure to get your magnet for your keepers and the hat and stuff to get everything out be way much easier and then after that go ahead and press your valve out may give it a little twist depending on how long it's been up there here's the valve all right guys so went ahead and got the rest of the valve train system out the way in terms of the intake side okay so now only thing you have to do is take your valve stem seals out these are old and they're going to be hard to get out because these have not been in like these have not been serviced in a very very long time so i don't have the tool for that i am going to get one but what i am going to do i'm going to bring this home with me along with the rest of the miscellaneous stuff the small brackets and stuff the water system the cooling system right here and most definitely the intake manifold and the throttle body that's down there i'm gonna take those home with me i'm gonna hand wash those small parts myself but in terms of the cylinder head and the intake manifold machine shop they're going to get it clean one other thing that i most likely going to do before i go ahead and head up out of here is take this housing off for the oil pump okay so i gotta take this bolt off so that way i can go ahead and take the rest of these bolts off and then this can hopefully slide out i may i may end up having to use the breaker bar so they are held in look like by a couple of tens some up here there's one over there and one right there so let me go ahead and get that done All right, so I highly doubt this may come out easily. It is loose. I feel like I am missing a bolt. Or it has something to do with this part. I don't know. Now I shouldn't have, unless I am missing a bolt. Do I, should I? Yep, yeah, I'm gonna take this oil seal off. Yeah. 
¿Te gusta? Ya. That's why I never make it to the NBA. All right, now let's see if this housing will come off. Oh, that's loose. Come on. Is this not supposed to come off or is it a certain way? Am I missing a bolt? I feel like I'm missing a bolt. All right, guys, I almost got this guy off. So I ended up having to take the oil pump off. So if you guys are doing this, the oil pump housing, I'm gonna have to take this oil pump off because you come under here. See this guy right here? This is the oil pickup tube. And then there's gonna be two screws on top that you have to take off. And well, technically three. And then this thing will come off. Then this should come out. So I was having a problem trying to take this off and I'm glad I looked into it. So take your oil pump off then the uh, pickup tube and then this should come out all right guys so the oil pump housing is off i end up taking this out as well this did actually fly out when i was trying to take this guy off but yeah like i said you do have to drop the oil pan in order for this assembly to come out as well as take off those two well technically three 10 millimeter bolts for the pickup tube i'm gonna take that home with me as well to clean it so i'm gonna go ahead and pack everything up load onto the car and hopefully i'll see you guys next week so ta-ta all right guys so it's actually the next following week um i want you guys to disregard some of the stuff that i said last week now when i went home i did take some of the parts home and then i came to realize that i don't want to sit here and restore you know certain nearly 300,000 mile parts and without knowing the physical condition of it and installing it on the silica when it's time to you know rebuild the entire engine I'm talking about in terms of the oil pump and the oil pump housing. I went ahead and bought a brand new set off eBay. It's actually on its way here now. And I'm talking about in terms of this rack and pinion. We're gonna get to that in a minute. But all the other small miscellaneous parts like all the brackets, the cooling system, the oil filter adapter slash cooler type deal. All of this right here is gonna get cleaned inside the shop. I have a method and the reason I'm cleaning inside the shop because I messed around and left my uh, degreaser here. So uh, might as well do everything while I'm here. Everything up here is still intact. Here is the little ring type deal that goes to the oil pump housing that sits here. As a matter of fact, it really doesn't even look bad to be honest with you. It's just, you know, a few stainings here and there. It's actually good. I may be able to reuse that. So that's part of my focus today is clean some of these brackets here. I also want to go ahead and take out the rack and pinion itself and the subframe. I really want to take the subframe to the car wash, which is actually next door over there. I'm going to take that to the car wash, go ahead and clean this and then bring it back type deal. And that's in terms of the rack and pinion, I'm probably most likely going to get a new rack and pinion. Like I said before, I am not running old parts on a car. Now in terms of the block itself, I know I'm not going to get to this today. I'm going to do this next week. And technically, this whole video is just me cleaning miscellaneous parts and getting this thing ready for the rebuild. I can't forget the torque converter dust cover. That's going to get cleaned as well. My cross member right here is already out, so that is good to go. So like I said, I'm going to go ahead and take the back opinion out. And then we can go ahead and start dismantling the subframe. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and take the control arms off first, and then we can do the rack and pinion because I have a feeling that it's not going to fit in the trunk of my car as a whole unit. Alrighty guys, I figured out what I'm going to do first. There's going to be a pinch bolt right here for the uh, steering shaft that connects to the rack and pinion. Then I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this line right here. And then there's going to be two other bolts, but I'm going to drop the subframe with the rack and pinion. I was trying to avoid that, but looks like I have no other choice. Then I'm going to go down there, disconnect the sway bar link. I'm going to disconnect the bottom end. And then it's going to be a bolt for the control arm, one right there and one underneath there. Y'all won't be able to see it. But once you guys go underneath the car, you will be able to see it. Here's a better visual of that bolt right there. Once you disconnect that bottom end and those two bolts that I showed you, this control arm will go free. Then it's going to be this big bolt right here. And then there's going to be two more bolts at the bottom and vice versa on the other side. Hopefully once I actually drop this, I can give you guys a better visual on how this is orientated. Okay. You know what? We don't even need a new engine. We don't need to rebuild the engine. I can just 
I can just power this thing. I'm, I'm kidding. I, I'll shut up. I highly recommend you guys get one of these hose clamp pliers. I got these from Harbor Freight. It's actually useful. All I'm gonna break these bolts free on all sides. Okay. Ooh, what size is this? Oh no. Oh no, hell no, this isn't good. As you guys saw, I tried to, you know, break that bolt free, but I think somebody already been in here trying to take the bolt out. It wasn't me. It's kind of stripped. It's not stripped, stripped, but it's like it got some, it got some grit to it. But I need to see if I can remedy something. All right, I'm gonna try a method. There we go. Okay, that kind of worked. All I had to do was uh, hammer the 19 in the bolt. What you guys saw was me using the 19 for the big bolts and that 12 for that pinch bolt. Now, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but I'm using a T30 and a ratcheting 14 to take the sway bar lengths off. I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna just take both ends off. Let's see if I can just... I'll do one of these, hold that. Just like magic, just coming off. That's two, and just like that, this guy comes off. There you go. Uh huh? This is still technically brand new, same for the other side, so I am gonna be reusing this. Come on, I need to get this other 19. Oh God, oh, that's been up there. Oh, hold on. I'm tightening, no! Left feet loosey. Righty tighty, right? Okay. Kind of effed up, but uh, I can save myself from that. There we go. Woo! Woo, look at all that dirt. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Now this should somewhat come out. Come on. She's loose. She gotta pull her out. All right guys, so there's gonna be three bolts I'm gonna have to loosen on this side for the subframe and this should come off. I'm just gonna loosen it. I may have to take it off all the way. Who knows? There we go. Now, this guy right here. All right. Ooh. Okay, came off a little bit easier than I thought. Okay. So I was wondering what uh, size bolt I'm using. It's a 19. These big bolts are 19s. All right, guys, that's two bolts down. And uh, low-key kind of scared for this one. All right, that's the last subframe bolt. There we go. All right. Okay. This thing wants to play with me. Alrighty guys, so I went ahead and got the lower uh, passenger side control arm out. As you guys can see, it did try to fight me, but I managed to get it out. So I already went ahead and dismantled this side. I got the bolts and stuff out. I got my car jack supporting the subframe and stuff. I went ahead and got the other bolts out. So now I'm actually down to this last bolt right here. I haven't even touched it yet. So uh, let's just hope for the best. And just hope that this is not going to be in the way in terms of this being stuck up there. May have to use some leverage, but uh, 
Let's give it a shot. Oh, I really want to use a drill for this one, but uh, I'm gonna take my time with this and see what I can do. All right, bolt is out. Let's uh, see if she breaks free. The fan is on right now, but guys, we finally got her out, man. That rack and pinion was a pain to get off. And I'm gonna show you, show you guys that real quick. On this shaft right here, it's rusted. And on the inside of that swivel, is rusted as well. So I had to use a lot of WD-40, which is over there. I had to use that to at least separate it. And I used a hammer and, where is it? I used a hammer and wrench method. I wedged it between the swivel and the base of the shaft, hammering it down and, uh, it came out. It took a couple of tries. It took a, literally a very long time, but she's out. I went ahead and took a couple more minutes out of my time to dismantle the rest of the subframe, which is the low control arms on both sides. The sway bar link, which is right here. The sway bar bushings right here, seen better days. And vice versa on that side. So that's more new stuff I have to get. I also was planning on getting a new control arms but unfortunately they do not make these anymore you have to get the bushings which i'm going to order and as you can see the metal sleeve inside the bushing is shot look at that one that one's even worse so, yep honestly all of this should have been done honestly i should have been at the car wash right now watching all of this stuff i'm actually about to do that now load up the subframe control arms sway bar link and that's that's pretty much it that's all i have to load up now in terms of the rack and pinion itself I made the decision on getting a new one, which is disappointing because I bought brand new inner and outer tie rods, which is right here and right there on that side. They're still actually good. And again, I am not trying to run a 30 year old rack opinion on this car. And plus the shaft is rusted. So yeah, cannot forget that crossbar. You know what? It was a good thing I did dismantle the low control arms because it wouldn't fit if I had it up there on the subframe. Oh, there we go. All right, guys, I'm about to head out. Um, I also came to another realization. I had a stupid moment. I have a fresh washer at the house. It's a 1600 or maybe an 1800 PSI, whichever the case. I have one at the house, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take it home and possibly tomorrow wash it. And you guys get to see me wash it okay and then next week we can come back wash the brackets and then most possibly the engine bay and the cylinder head not the cylinder head but the block itself so uh, i'll catch you guys tomorrow all right guys it's the next day here is the setup right here i got my pressure washer right there hooked up i got a bucket of uh soapy water and i got my subframe right here i'm gonna start off with the subframe first and then i'm gonna do the crossbar then I'm going to do the two lower control arms and then the sway bar itself. Yes, it is hot. Yes, it is like 90 degrees right now, probably upper 80s. And yes, I am sweating. But I need to go ahead and get this done. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and start by pressure washing first. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the degreaser and then agitate it with the brush. Then use some soapy water alongside with the agitation and spray it down again. It may take like two or three tries just to get everywhere. And then I'm going to flip it on the other side and, you know, do the same thing. It's actually coming out better than what I thought. However, I may end up having to get a new pressure washer because I think I smell smoke coming from here, but then it went away. I'm gonna keep an eye on that, but yeah, I may have to get a new pressure washer. Let's continue.
right my friends so the subframe system is officially clean so we got the subframe like the rear subframe sway bar link the cross member now as you can see it does look dry it's, it's actually clean it's not dirty anymore it's clean it's just dried up i may be able to touch some of the parts up all that good stuff in terms of painting but that's going to be another day i'm going to go ahead and clean up i already cleaned up most of the stuff that was over here but i'm going to go ahead and pack this up and i'll see you guys possibly sunday good morning ladies and gentlemen we are back here at the shop i have my fully clean rack and pinion put into place and as far as the low control arms yes i am going to get the bushings replaced rack and pinion is going to get replaced i may save this as salvage so now it is time to clean every single bracket and stuff now three things have happened uh yesterday today is sunday number one yesterday i had to work so overtime kicked in Number two, went to the junkyard yesterday and got a side fender for the LS400. And number three, my oil pump housing and pump assembly finally showed up. So guys, we are actually this close of getting the 5S rebuild. There's just a few things in the way that I'm gonna talk about later, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and clean these brackets. All right, so here is what I'm going to be using. I'm gonna be using some awesome spray. I'm not sponsored by them, but I find these very helpful. I got this in a spray bottle with diluted water. I may end up using the pump as well. I bought this from Walmart. I got a shop vac to clean off all that crud on the block. I got a new filter because mine's just clogged up. And I'm just gonna go ahead and work out here because it gets hot back there and this fan don't even reach that far. So I'm gonna just work over here. I'm gonna put you guys in the time lapse type deal. Enjoy the time lapse.
All right, guys, huge, huge update real quick. I have spent the last several hours cleaning all of these parts, like every single individual part, all the brackets, all the lines and stuff, that shield over there. And obviously you guys see I got the subframe system all laid out and all that good stuff. I even went as far as cleaning the cam caps on both sides. There are a few things that I haven't gotten to because I ran out of time, such as the engine block. I haven't gotten to that. This bracket right here, which I don't know where it goes to, but I will figure it out once the rebuild comes. And last but not least, the radiator system. As you see, it's dirty. The fans are dirty. Front and back is dirty. I'm going to dismantle that, clean it, reassemble it. I'm not getting a new radiator. It's still in good condition, but if it does leak, I'll just get a new one. Simple as that. Now, there is a couple more things I have to do before the 5SFE rebuild begins. I still gotta get a new rack opinion, even though it may or may not be good. I'll probably save this as salvage. I'm still debating whether I should get this transmission rebuilt or just swap it with the donor over there. I still have to get the serpentine system, such as a brand new alternator, AC compressor, power steering pump. I still gotta replace that, I still gotta get a starter. And last but not least, I still have to go to the machine shop so that way they can clean my cylinder head and my air intake. It's just a few miscellaneous stuff that I still have to take care of. So in part two is going to be the final part of the cleaning, which is in terms of the block right here, the radiator system, and that bracket I showed you guys earlier. And I almost forgot, I have to clean the SD204 chassis. Honestly, I may be missing a few more things, but uh, we're getting there slowly but surely. But anyways, that's all I got for you guys in today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, y'all know what to do. I'm going to go ahead and pack up and head out. I'm out. Love you guys. Stay safe. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.